What's the difference between an innovator and a disruptor? Because Jeff Bezos might see himself yes. as a disruptor. You write about innovators. Is there a difference or it's a distinction by the different names? Yeah, well, you can be disruptive without being innovative. True, true. <laughs> but I, uh, innovation in my field just means the application of new ideas or technologies to something useful. And sometimes that's disruptive, right? So digital technologies have disrupted analog technologies, and we would call that uh, someone doing that to be a disruptor. But uh, sometimes innovation is happening in a space where there isn't something to disrupt. It's just solving a problem. So just to be clear, you've looked at eight breakthrough innovators, right. got the likes of Albert Einstein, Elon Musk, Marie Curie, Thomas Edison. I mean, these right. are incredibly famous names. Talk about what connects them. Yeah, it's amazing how much they have in common. Yes. It's pretty surprising. So for instance, they almost all felt a sense of social detachment. They felt a little disconnected from the social world around them or like its rules didn't apply to them. And on the one hand, you would think of that as making you kind of lonely. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it made them independent thinkers. And Einstein talked a lot about how being a loner helped him to be a more independent thinker. Where does that confidence come from? Because you focus yeah. a lot on this sort of self-belief, or at least the belief in what they're focusing on. Where right. does that come from? Particularly when you're talking about someone who's in, in many ways socially awkward or feels very right. alone at times. Right, so they had things about them you would think would make them not confident. Exactly. And yet they had this extreme self-efficacy, which is a type of confidence related to your belief in your ability to overcome obstacles and achieve your goals. Right. And it's hugely important. It'll make you more innovative. It'll also make you more productive and happier in, in all types of work. Uh, usually where the innovators have gotten it is from early wins. So some early experience in their life where they did something that was a little bit remarkable or overcome an Shores obstacle they faced. Yeah, and it teaches them something about what they're capable of. So of the eight people that you chronicle, that you kind of, that you delve into, who was the most extreme? Who, even among these eight, yes. really struck out? Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla is the most astonishing and weird and in some ways broken person that I studied, but just brilliantly genius, came up with so many different things. He invented the alternating current electrical systems yes. that we use today. He invented uh, wireless communication, wireless uh, radio and communication. He invented lots of forms of lighting, the first remote controlled robots. Uh, he almost never slept. He slept about two hours a night. <laughs> he had clear signs of mania. He was very socially disconnected and had oversensitivity to stimuli. So just a, a really interesting person whose traits were turned up to such a high level that it helped you spot them in other people after uh, you had seen them in Tesla. So interesting. This is really important. Yeah, well, speaking of Tesla, let's talk a little bit about Elon Musk. Okay. Uh, he's been in the news quite a bit. And you point out that he's a different kind of entrepreneur because he claims profit is not his real goal. Yeah. Um, um, investors seem to give Elon Musk a pass. Uh, yeah. His company doesn't necessarily need to make money and they continue handing over their money to him. Yeah. Is a pu publicly traded company the best thing he should be doing or, or should he be in another form of, should he be on top of something, some other kind of entity? You know, he took Tesla public because he needed to, to raise the funds to keep it floating. And I think if he'd had the choice, he wouldn't have taken it public. And he hasn't taken SpaceX public because he has a big idealistic goal in mind for SpaceX, which is to get to Mars. And if he took that company public, a board of directors would make him uh, force him to make compromises that would make it less likely to get to Mars. So he's basically stated, I'm not taking SpaceX public until we get to Mars. I just want to go back to what you were saying about spotting talent and, and abilities in other people and how important that was because we look at some of, not necessarily big innovators, but those who've created big companies and something that connects them is the ability to spot talent, yeah. give them the ability to just run with it. How important is that in, in these cases as well, that sensing someone else who's unique? You know what I would say studying these people is that it's taught me uh, that firms should really go out of their way to be tolerant of weirdness, all right? <laughs> because weird yeah. people are sometimes going to be the people who are most creative, or it's the other way around perhaps, the most creative people are often a little bit weird because they're creative precisely because they challenge norms, because they see the world a different way and they're willing to stand up for the fact that they see the world a different way and that can make them uncomfortable people. Yeah. So Steve Jobs was the epitome of an uncomfortable person, right? a difficult person to work with, but you know, brilliant and had a lot of conviction.